Okay, so I'm going to be doing the uh, balance shaft delete on my 3RZ, but I'm not going to be using the LC engineering kit. I'm just going to be uh, taking the balance shafts out, pulling out the bearings, flipping them 90 degrees so they plug up their own oil port, and then getting my own drill and tap to drill the oil port in the block. So you have to take off the actual timing chain itself if you're going to do this. And a tip to do is um, you take the gear off and use the marks. So you, there's two bright links on the chain that lines up with the uh, mark on the gear, on the cam gear. And then if you cable tie it into position, uh, it's not going to come apart from that timing on the gear itself. And then there's one part down here, one bright link on the bottom. And that's going to line up with the link on the, sorry, the notch on the gear just there. You can see that. My engine's out of timing because I tried to turn it over after I'd pulled the chain tensioner out. And so, yeah, I heard it jump teeth and I thought, shit, so I'm going to have to reset the timing. So anyway, what you need to do is you need to pull off the um, chain guides and then this part's going to be kept. That's the oil squirter for the bottom of the chain. You have to block off one of the oil ports on that one. I'm going to show you how to do that later. But apart from that, all of this chain, these gears and that, they can all just vanish you don't need them. It's a good idea to watch the uh, LC Engineering video. That gives you a good idea. I'll link that in the description, but apart from that, it's pretty good. Um, I'll show you how to do it here. 12 mil bolt again. There we go. Right, so you're going to want to undo this top one first. So then once you've got that bolt out, you pull this gear off here. And then you can pull the chain off, hopefully. There we go. Right, so next what you're going to want to do is pull the front gears off themselves. Remember the way they go. You're going to need to put this one back on in the end because this is going to space out the timing chain uh, belt pulley thing, the timing chain gear, sorry. And so if you don't have that on, it would slide back and forward and it would damage your chain really badly. So next, swap back out to the 12 millimeter. And pop this one off here. Ow. Come through here. Alright, so then that's going to come off. That's another guide for the timing chain itself. So the um, balance shaft chain. And you're going to want to do this one. Oh, that was tight. You're meant to undo this bolt uh, like it shows on the LC engineering video, but it just spins as you can see because the balance shaft is in there. So I've got this theory. But if you pull this off with it, there we go. And there's your balance shaft. Look at that. That's mad. So then you'll probably be able to do this other one here. Oh, damn it. So that one comes out. Then oh shit. 
That's a balance shaft there. All goodly. So then this is the uh, actual oil squirter. As you can see underneath it, underneath it here, this oil port on the front squirts the bottom of the timing chain pulley. And this oil squirter here will squirt the balance shaft chain. So you can plug that up. You can the guy that I'm gonna to get to GNET reckons you can just paint it. And so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do that. And what you should also do is lock the actual tensioner here. And I think you do that, you can hold it up like that. Uh, I think it should be able to lock somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, looks like it. Anyway, that's it. Alright, so now we're going to knock out the uh, bearings for the balance shaft. Uh, as you can see, I've moved my timing chain just down, hanging off this stud up here, uh, just because I have to hang my light off the uh, latch for the bonnet. Oh, there's fucking mosquitoes everywhere. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your... Sorry, let's wipe sand off that. <laughs> In fact, it's probably... Yeah, um, it's going to be a good idea to clean your socket up. I'm going to go spray mine with degreaser. But this is a 32mm socket, and as you can see, it fits perfectly in the um, bore of that hole. So what you're going to want to do is, you're going to want to knock the bearing through. It's going to fall through down the bottom of the block. I've got the oil pan off because you need to uh, take the oil pan off, as I stated in the other video. Uh, that's because uh, the actual pickup tube that bolts to the uh, timing chain cover is uh, through the uh, oil pan. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is... Grab your socket and put the actual bar through it backwards and put it in like that and you're going to hit on the very end with a hammer. This is going to be a bastard. There we go, so that's gone through now, and might need some long nose pliers just to yank it through. Okay, there we go, so the bearing's through now. So as you can see, it's got an oil hole on it. So when you install it, you're gonna to wanna to flip the oil hole 180 degrees to where it was sitting. So if you just feel with your finger, the oil hole's up in this corner, right where this, I believe that's the feed for it. So yeah, where the oil hole is, just flip it 180 degrees so it points down here. Oh my bad, there's two oil holes. I must be retarded or something. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, install it so the actual hole is between both the oil ports. So I'm going to go here, I think. So first you're going to want to just degrease and give it a wipe off. Okay, so what you're going to want to do next before you install it is just grab some oil and just dab your finger in it and run it around the outside diameter of the actual bearing itself. This will just make it easier to go inside the engine. Then you can sit it back in the bore, right where the uh, oil hole does not line up with the other ones in the block. And then grab your mallet again and your 32mm socket, whack it, whack it home. Yeah. 
All right, there we go. So you're going to repeat that for this other side. All the ports in this one are in this corner and this corner. So install it with a, with a hole right here. Yep, nothing there. Be careful that it hasn't pulled any material. That's a hair. But on the LC engineer, yeah, just like that, see? Focus. Yeah, you can see that there. There's a little bit of grey of metal from the bearing. So just wipe your finger around the inside, make sure you've got all of them off. Okay, so I'm getting ready to tap and uh, put a grub screw in this uh, oil port here. So what I've measured up is the hole is about three or four millimeters in diameter. And uh, I'm gonna try an M6 by one grub screw, uh, one millimeter, sorry, M6 by one. And so that means I have to drill out a five millimeter hole. And uh, I've seen someone on the internet, they've actually drilled all the way through and gone into their coolant jacket. So it's a good idea to just get your uh, vernier height gauge and just slam it down the hole there. And then, yep, that's the back of it there. So it's this deep, which is 31 millimeters, it looks like. Hang on. Yep, that's 31 millimeters right there. There you go, 31 millimeters, so that's 1.25 inches. Okay, so I've got the hole tap, uh, drilled, sorry. And now I'm going to tap it. And what you've got to do with your tap is you've got to rape the thing with grease because when you do that, all of the flutes are going to catch all of the chips, or most of the chips. And you're still going to want to stick a vacuum cleaner down the hole to make sure you get everything, but... It's going to grab a lot of the chips in comparison to not having any grease on the tip of it at all. Okay, so I've just drilled out this hole and now I'm going to tap it with the tap here. So what you're going to want to do is get your grease out. Just grab your tap. Just give it a big old oof in there. Yeah, probably. Depends how deep you're going to go. I'm going to go about that deep on mine. I'm hoping that these taps work. I've already started this just to speed it up, but yeah, I really hope these taps work. They were shitty, cheap Chinese ones off Wish, so so far they've worked okay, but they started to bind up and get really fucking tight, so let's just see. Now when you tap, you just got to make sure you're going in at 90 degrees. <sighs> The size that, I've, that I'm going to is, um, I've gone up, uh, I've gone to M8 by 1.25 and the tapping, uh, uh, tapping drill size for that is 6.8 mils, but I didn't have one, I went straight up to 7, so I've only got one millimetre of thread biting in, so should hope it's enough. I'm just going to send it with a shit tonne of the red Loctite just to make sure it's all good.
All right, let's try that. Make sure you keep it straight as it comes out. Okay, so it's gone in about that far now. I don't know if you can see. No, it's not going to self-adjust. Right. So yeah, give it a nice clean up. And what I've got here is a vacuum cleaner. So you're just going to want to turn that on and suck out the rest of the bits. Grab your grub screw. Got this one here. It's not going to show it very well. Now I'm going to chuck red Loctite on here. This red Loctite onto here and then just do it up held tight into the block. Don't do it too tight because you could strip out the threads and then you'll have to go one another size up grub screw. Right, we'll give that a go. Hopefully that stays tight, but I'll have a look at it tomorrow.